we're just catching bait right now. That did not take 11 seconds. That took 0.11. All right, son, that's enough fighting. Come on up here, we got stuff to do. Oh, he's actually a pretty good one. What is good, Grey Gang? We are out here today, and we're gonna be doing the food chain fishing challenge. And if you don't know, I live in Kentucky, as you can tell, everything's pretty much green. It's always humid, and it's about to hit really hot. But anyways, the first step to the food chain challenge is to find the base of the food chain. Now, what we're planning on doing is hopefully finding some worms under some of these rocks. But since I do live in Kentucky, and let's not forget, it is like a jungle in here. If we sneak through here, we could probably find some like beetles or weird things eating leaves. Maybe even a caterpillar, dude. If we find a caterpillar, pillar we win a grasshopper 100 percent, dude like there's there's enough grass here to probably find enough bait without needing a worm at all but yeah i guess before we yeah, actually you found one yeah see if you can grab him he should be right in there somewhere while ethan's finding that i guess i should probably tell you guys what the food chain challenge is first it's pretty self-explanatory but we're going to work our way up the food chain with what we catch we'll start off with hopefully a grasshopper maybe a small worm then we'll use that worm to catch something like a little bitty bluegill or maybe like a little minnow or something then we'll use that minnow to work herself up to like a bass then maybe if we're lucky we can use that bass to step our way up to like a giant catfish that may be a stretch but we are going to work our way up slowly but surely yeah. Yeah, first thing first, find a little grasshopper because I can tell you right now there's no shortage. There's one. There's one right there, but he just jumped. These things are really small, but then again, that's like the perfect size to catch a minnow. We'll keep looking. We'll flip some rocks and see what we can do. If we can find some worms, they're a little bit harder for worms to get away from us, I guess. What we got under here? We have a very sketchy looking spider over here. Don't think I'm going to mess with him. I'll leave him be. You look over here. I'm going to look right here on some of these trees and see if I can find something. There's enough trees. There should be enough random things on here. Because you got to think about it. Whenever there's a random fish in the water, like the pond's literally right there, you got to think about what he's actually living off of. And you know it's not worms. Huh? Man, look at this spider. How big is it? Oh, son's wild. Oh, son, that is a big one. That's an old son big spider, and he's got an old son lot of babies with him. He's an old son easy target, but not for us. But you gotta keep in mind, these fish, they're used to random bugs falling out of trees. That's what most of their diet probably is. That and little random little baby bacteria in the water or something like that. Check these out. I'm sure there's some kind of animal trying to eat these. See, what is that thing, a lightning bug? 100% dude, I'll take it. I mean, if worse comes to worse, I can use him, but preferably I'll use something different. There's an old son bird nest. I got a lightning bug, I'm gonna have to use him. All right, boys, so in the meantime, I'm gonna be rigging up my fishing gear here. I still do have the, whatever this thing is, I forgot what it's called, lightning bug in my hand. I gotta dig in here and find the smallest hook that I can actually find. I've got some pretty small, and that's what we're gonna have to use. That right there is what we're using. You guys can literally barely even see it, but that's what I have to use. My dude just caught a moth. What's his name? You S caught a full moth. Yeah, his name's Steve. Dude, that thing's going to be amazing bait. We could catch a bass on that. You think so? 100%. If it flaps a lot. Oh, he flaps. I'm going to go ahead and rig up this little hook. Then we'll strap on that lightning bug and see what he can do. I think that moth is 100% going to catch something. It's way too lively. He tried to run when I catch, caught him. Understandable. Got that KG Pocket Knife. They're restocked if you guys don't know that. I don't. I think I may have forgot to tell you, but we have this color restocked and all these colors over here, they're all restocked. But yeah, this one was by far the most popular. It ran out super fast last time, so if you want the USA, go check it out. KendallGrade1.com slash shop or first link in description. It's also where you can pick up your goat socks. I like them. I got a pair. I like them. Never used a lightning bug for bait before, so if I do it wrong, I'm sorry, I guess. I mean, he's on there. It's kind of unfortunate that we needed to use a lightning bug, but at the end of the day, I'm sure there's no shortage of lightning bugs. So, we actually have to clear out a place to fish. If you guys remember this pond, which some of you guys who have literally been here a long time, you remember this pond. This is what I refer to as my old pond, because it's not the new pond, I guess. But it gets really grown up, and now we've got full-size trees pretty much out here, so let me grab the KG hatchet. Also available at kindergrade1.com slash shop for a sling shirt. And we're just gonna clear around a nice spot. We need to come down here with a big tratter. And hog bush it. By golly, do we even have a hatchet? Yeah. Where it at? There it is. By golly. We got two of them. You can see, we've used this one. Aw. Oh. You need to make a machete. I think these are better than machete. That'll give us enough room to fish, ain't it? Yeah. Catch us some old sun. Straight up, one, two, three. What's your predictions on the dragonfly? I think it'll catch one. Whether it be a leaf, whether it be a fish, I don't know. I think it's going to be how long is it going to take for them to realize that this little black dot that is unfortunately now dead is something worth eating. 
Oh, that didn't take long. I think something done ate him. No, never mind. He came off the hook. Let's get this moth. Put Steve on there. You know what's going to happen, don't you? What? I'm going to put him on there on the hook, and he's just going to fly off and take my line. That would be honestly cool to see. It'd be cool to be like a pet moth. Here he is. Check this old son out. Just a standard moth. Not endangered or anything. I didn't know moths were endangered. That's what I just said. Like, is there any species of moth that is? I'm sure there. I'm sure there's probably at least one. You know? Here we go. Got him hooked pretty good. We'll see what a fish thinks about that. He's about to just fly off with my line. You just gotta let the flip the bell and he'll fly your line out there. That's what I'm thinking. Whoa! We already, already got a bite on him. Check this out. Well, I'd like to get it to where y'all can see it. As soon as he flaps his wings like twice, done deal. Well, I think I just killed a dang. I'll twitch him as if he's still alive. Oof. Oh, you see the bite? Yep. They're going after it, dude. Oh, come on now. Oh, he took my bait. What do you think it was? I, I, I mean, I could have been anything. Could have been a, could have been a walleye or a sturgeon, peacock bass. What you call one of them? Toss up. Anyways, we do have a few worms that we found, so we're gonna go ahead and use some of them. Worms, they, they should be pretty safe. Okay. If we don't catch something on a worm. This pond's, you know, glitching. Can you show us the the toss-up term again? Like how you do it with a hand motion? So is it like this or like this? Like you're flicking a lighter. Oh, okay. You want to see a magic trick? There's a worm, right? Now there's two. Can't you reveal my secrets? Don't worms have two heads? I don't know. You can ask some of them in the bag. Hey, is it true that you guys have two heads? Well, and you heard it there, didn't you? Thanks. All right, here you go. Ready? Yep. How long do you think this is going to take? 11 seconds. We've not even got to the actual big fish. We're just catching bait right now. That did not take 11 seconds. That took 0.11. As soon as it hit the water. That's what I'm saying, dude. This pond is unfortunately, like, not very healthy. So, like, it drains. It does not hold water, except a little bit. So, like, there's not enough water to actually put predator fish in here. But there is enough water for things like that to grow. And pretty much it's just my private bait pond because nothing else can live here and I can literally catch bait whenever I want. There's also a brush pile down there, but the water's too nasty to see. Like literally, as soon as this touches the water anywhere in this whole pond, it's like eat up with green sunfish. And there, there's so many that they're kind of stunted to that growth which it, you know it's kind of natural because there's no, nothing else you can do about it but i mean it's serving its purpose it's a really solid bait pond we get about 10 more of those we should be set going down to the river ethan doesn't know where i'm taking him to the river he just knows we're going to the river but it's not your average spot in the river like literally as soon as you throw it in just go ahead and pull it out and you got a fish you understand how this can get old pretty fast so do you feel them bite or what no you kind of just throw it in and reel it back and uh i'm i've still only used that half of that one worm we've not even used another one i'm gonna literally toss it in and reel it back and because i'm sure this will probably get boring we will catch you guys back at the house whenever i'm getting my rig ready to fish with these this is like a two inch fish that's gonna be the most perfect bait you can possibly get plus these are green sunfish so like they're pretty hardy they're pretty durable they'll survive on the hook we'll catch you guys up there all right guys that's for the catfishing setup it's an old bass pro brawler spinning combo it's like 35 bucks or at least it used to be as for the rig which is the really thing that matters we just have an egg weight up here a split shot and a circle hook that's the rig you'll see why we chose this exact rig here in a little bit but let's go on down to the river Fish. All right, guys. So what we have here is I'm pretty sure this is a hydroelectric plant. So there's a big power thing over there, and they're just using this water to make electricity. But what they're also doing unintentionally is creating a really good fishing spot. Now, as you can see, all the water's coming down. 
the fish are gonna sit in places to where the water kind of swirls up. For example, right beside this wall, you can see that the water's still right there and the water's flowing right there. A lot of those fish will sit right there in the seam and catch little minnows that just float by, swim out, eat them, and then swim back to where they don't have to swim the whole time. Now that's the plan at least. We'll see what happens. We have some minners. You can see there's obviously been a lot of people here. Here's a pack of Guggen baits. Andrew Flair's probably been here, you know, swarping on some hogs. But uh, yeah, let me go ahead and get rigged up and I'll get the first rod just tossed out there. Okay, guys. Now, obviously, going out and catching live bait isn't for everybody. And if you're one of those people, Mystery Tackle Box might actually be the thing for you. Now, Mystery Tackle Box is a subscription service that sends you a box full of baits every single month delivered straight to you. Now, it is a Mystery Tackle Box, so you don't know what's in it but you can choose from a bunch of different pumps oh this rod's about to take off dude that one's been bumping already this one's been bumping it already that one's hard bump oh this one is bumping pretty hard i may actually prop this one up right here on the bucket that way it'll give me a little bit more forgiveness that's the crazy thing about this is like it's not going to take much for one of these rods to just jump off but anyways back to what i was saying you can actually choose from a bunch of different boxes like if you like catfishing you can get catfishing this one's more of a bass fishing box but it should be great for here because there's all kinds of predator fish here and that's what we're going to use it for we got a frog that'll be really good maybe not so much here because we're in the river then we got this lucky craft crankbait we got this bright yellow jig which honestly i may use today some good old mustad hook another little crankbait and then these little things right here. I think I'm definitely gonna use these two and put a little combination together. If you guys would like to pick up your own mystery tackle box, use my link down in the description. And if it's your first box, use promo code GREGGANG. That'll get your first box as low as $10. This jig's actually gonna be perfect for this river because it's bright and the water's muddy right now. Big small mouth, big large mouth, big walleye, maybe even a musky. This thing's gonna be perfect. And there, there's what I'm gonna be fishing with for the next little bit. I'm gonna just toss this all around this log. I'll go down there there's some rock we should be able to catch something right here guys this is some prime territory really oh 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 Oh, 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 no. Oh, man, something had him. I figured I'd grab it because, like, the pole's gone if yeah, I don't. Yeah, that's what I was saying, grab it. Yo, that was crazy. Travis, my boy, whatever it was. Let me see if I can diagnose what that was by just the box. It's crazy because it kind of just grabbed him and didn't really shell him. I'll tell you this, I wouldn't be much surprised if that was a turtle. Anyways, I'm going to rehook him. And toss Travis back in. I'm gonna toss Travis right back in. Like the minute you walk away, it just starts going like, okay. I know. They're only getting casted like maybe five feet off of this wall. Yeah, we're just dropping it right down there. That right there is plenty deep enough. I just wanna pull it just enough slack up to where I know if it's getting a bite. Other than that, I don't want it too tight. See that? Yeah. That's Travis getting nervous. Whenever, if you're fishing with uh, minners at least, not worms, worms don't really have a brain, but minners, if you're throwing a minner out and it starts twitching all of a sudden, that means he's getting nervous. And he gets nervous whenever something big is sitting there staring at him. So if your minner's just chilling and all of a sudden it starts getting twitchy, get ready because he's getting nervous. Something's about to happen. All right, guys, I figured while we're not getting a ton of bites, maybe I could come over here and explore some. So over there is our primary fishing spot, but right over here is like a secondary fishing spot, which we've not tried yet. It is a little steep, and if for some reason you slip, you are going to slide right off the edge and into the water. What if I actually go over there and get my fishing pole and bring it back and cast it right here? And even more specifically, right there should be one of the best fishing spots on the entire river. So I'm gonna go get my rod, bring it back right here. We'll see what happens. Hopefully we can get something to bite right here. There he is. Oh my gosh, I just got a fish. Dude, that is a monster smallmouth bass. What in the world? <laughs> I just got a monster smallmouth bass. What is that? Oh my goodness. Dude, no way. I watched that happen. I literally watched it come up and eat it. Oh my goodness. Dude, what is that? I knew this was gonna be one of the best spots. All right, what are we thinking we wanna do with this thing? Do we wanna eat it? I've never ate a smallmouth. How did he fight? He, uh, he didn't get to fight much. We'll just let him go. Sound good? 
Yeah. All right. It was a hard fall, but it'll be okay. It's the only option. If we can get a catfish, though, we'll definitely eat that thing. Nice catch. It's pretty good. How much does it weigh? I'd say about four. About four feet. We'll <laughs> let him go. All right. Moment of truth, boys, is my truck still here with all four windows? All right, so far, so good. Did I got all the window. Oh, let's go, baby. All four windows intact. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, boys, it's game time. We are leaving location number one, and we're heading to, if you can guess it, location number two. Put them back in two-wheel. Yeah. Mine was in two-wheel the whole time. Mine's like you, dude. It do anything in two-wheel drive. It don't even need that diff. Mine's got the Visco lock. Thoughts on location number one. What you thinking? Uh, it sucked. Let me just say this. It probably wasn't the best idea to come catfishing in the river at the exact moment when all the catfish in the river are on nest. That's just my hot, my hot take, okay? So we're going to a pond where the catfish do not nest and we're going to catch one within like three minutes. Oh. And I'm going to give you guys a quick tip right here. If you guys are looking to catch a lot of fish, go to a location that has a lot of fish. That's a good idea. That's the best idea I've ever come up with. Good word of advice. I need a Nobel Peace Prize for that. All right, we'll catch you at the pond. Okay, guys, it is the next day. We're out here at my pond now. We knew that river, as we could tell, probably wasn't going to be the move. So we came to this pond, which is overly stocked with catfish, pretty much. If you watch my videos for a long time, you will know that. The rig I'm fishing with is my old bait caster, and I have a hook. Good rig. Yeah, it works. We also have a couple coyotes moving in on our position. Probably going to swarm and attack at any moment. So just keep your head on a swivel. Let me just say, you better watch out, Jethro. There's I know a, you're here. Another one just showed up. I know. We got three converging on our position, old son. But yeah, after we do that, since this is the food chain challenge, we're going from human hands, phalanges, up to worms, up to bluegill, up to catfish, up to humanoid people americans pretty legit yeah pretty much it now we just gotta catch a catfish that might be perfect right there all right boys whenever i get a bite if i get a bite i'm gonna show you um a pretty good payload oh here it goes i'm just gonna be real with you guys here we go ready get ready get ready get ready oh god i'm just gonna be real with you guys we uh we ain't getting no bites on no minners so i switched up to bread and these catfish absolutely love it and um yeah i'm just happy we got a catfish because i was thinking i was gonna go have to go home and go down local Super Walmart and buy us a big pack of catfish, son. Luckily, we got us a little catfish right here. His name's Jebediah. He's a nice little catfish. Looks like a good little channel catfish. Jebediah Jethro Wilson the third. We ain't saw him yet. He's not exactly the biggest catfish, but the thing is about catfish, the bigger they are, that doesn't necessarily mean they're better to eat. It just means they can feed more people. A lot of times with animals and stuff, the smaller ones actually taste the best. That's why if you're gonna eat a deer, the younger ones and does are better. If you're going to eat a catfish, a lot of times the catfish this size actually taste the best. That's what I think. I think that's with a lot of things because, I mean, the older things get, the tougher they are. Like, imagine eating Mammy. Oh, gosh. She'd probably be real tough. All right, son. That's enough fighting. Come on up here. We got stuff to do. Oh, he's actually a pretty good one. Good, at least for this, what I'm talking about. Come on up here, old son. He'll be a good one, dude. Yeah, he will. He'll be actually a really good one. Oh, heck yeah, old son. What you doing? Jebediah Jethro Wilson the third. What do you think? Huh? I said he's rolling down in the deep. That's what I was thinking. Bussin' bussin'. Anyways, for this catfish, we're gonna head on home. We're actually gonna get this guy skinned up. He uh, he lived a good life. He's got a pretty big head. He does. And he's not skinny. So like, I don't know what the world they've been eating in here. They've been eating something good enough to stay pretty thick. Yeah, we'll catch you guys at the house. I'm gonna go ahead and end this guy's life. It is what it is. <laughs> Okay guys, we are home now. As you can see, we have a semi-dead catfish here. I'm going to say semi-dead because I'm going to be honest with you guys. You're going to see it flop a few times. But if you can see where the, for the knife placement, the old son's dead. Everything about him has been disconnected. But he still may flop a little bit because he's not a mammal, okay? He's a fish, and they do that. 
because they're weird. I'm actually going to leave this knife in them, which is the KG Pocket Knife USA Edition. If you want to pick this up, you can get it right now. KindleGreatWord.com slash shop or first link in the description. But also, one thing that we are going to be using is actually going to be this KG Filet Knife. I don't skin fish that often, but whenever I do, I definitely come out here and get this. Also, this shirt right here, I know I'm doing a bunch of promo and stuff, but for the Filet Knife, the orange shirt, and... The chicken socks. I'm going to give you guys a promo code for these three items. If you want one, use code Jesus, all caps, so that not only can he save you from your sins, but he can also save you 20% at kindlegrade1.com. You think Jesus would get mad at that, Ethan? No. I think he'd enjoy that. You're promoting Jesus. Why would he be mad over that? That's what I'm thinking. But yeah, for real. If you want to use that promo code, all caps, and you can get 20% off this, this, and those socks. But without further ado, boys, let's go ahead and get started. Little disclaimer. Your boy KG is not a chef or a filet mignon. So if I do something wrong, I don't know, make fun of me in the comments. I mean, kind of a small fillet for such a big fish. 100% my fault, but here's the thing, guys. I don't, I'm not a professional at this. I tried my best, and I did what I did. And honestly, that's not super bad, I don't think. Catch you guys in the kitchen. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to your favorite cooking show, Cooking with KG. Is that the name of it? I think so. Today, we're going to be cooking dogfish. Now, it's good looking. We're gonna dip this bad boy in some milk. Merk. All right, there you go. It's in the milk. We would have done eggs, but guess what? KG has a full farm full of chickens and still doesn't have any eggs, so it is what it is. Next, we're gonna pull it on over here to our cornmeal and ace seasoning. You'll see how I have that soon, just in case you haven't yet. Anyways, ooh, ya yeah boy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, sir. Ooh, yeah. Mmm, that's bussin' bussin'. Been dead? Pretty good. You look like Hasbulla with a hat on. Anyways, we're gonna eat a catfish. I'm gonna have ketchup on standby. I'm gonna have it on standby. I'm not even gonna put it on down in the plate. But the first time I ever done a catfish catch and cook, it was with Adam. If you know Adam, then you know Adam. But it was like four years ago, and uh, he didn't want to eat it because he felt bad for the fish. It was weird, dude. It wasn't weird, but it was funny because he's like, if I didn't know where the fish came from, I'd eat it. But we just caught it five minutes ago. That sounds like Adam. We had to shoot it to kill it. We didn't know what he was doing. <laughs> Anyways, here we go. We did put the Ace seasoning on it, so I'm excited to see what that tastes like. Is it good? That's really good, dude. And I remember what plain catfish tastes like. This is good. That's 100% the seasoning, too, because cornmeal doesn't have that taste. That's pretty legendary. It's your time. There's something special about that. There's something special about that. You can taste the difference. You can taste it. I'm about to call up Ace and be like, I need more. That's what I was just about to do. That. I was going to be like, dude. It's good. You need to send us a care package. I like it a lot. Like, I don't usually like fish, especially fish whenever I cook it. And I'm not just saying this, but that seasoning really did change it. That's good. Mm -hmm. That's really good. Now, let me ask you guys a question. Do you remember whenever I asked you guys if you wanted to send Mammy, my grandma, a birthday present? You can, and she's going to open them on camera. Well, we did that in yesterday's podcast. The podcast channel is called Kicking It With KG. In that podcast, Mammy opened the presents. It was super awesome. Click right over here if you want to watch that video, or click right over here if you want to see a catfish catch and cook, that very first one with Adam. Anyways, without further ado, guys, I'm going to hit you guys with a flying elbow and catch you guys on the next episode. Oh. 